watching Real Talk with Raheem. Hello and welcome back to another great segment of Real Talk with Raheem. Do you ever feel fat? Do you ever feel bloated? Do you ever feel like you eat too much? Do you ever feel like you can't get enough to eat? Do you feel like food is your best friend? Do you feel any health conditions such as poor blood circulation, poor vision, do you have diabetes or anything like that or high blood pressure? If so, those things could be directly linked to obesity. And today's topic is obesity 911, running out of weight. First, I would like to define obese. And the term obese basically means a medical condition in which excess body fat has accumulated to the point that it has negatively affected your health possibly even leading to death. A more clinical term or understanding for it is when you have more than 40 kilograms of BMI, body mass index, or over 100 pounds than your normal weight should be. Today we're gonna to be talking about ways to eat better. We're talking about ways to prevent obesity. We're gonna be talking about how you can exercise and live a more fundamentally happy, safer, and healthier lifestyle. Joining me on my panel today, I'm very pleased and enthused to have with me Dr. Jay Hammer. And Jay Hammer, Dr. Jay Hammer has been in the healthcare business for 33 years in Atlanta, located on 14th Street. He provides holistic healthcare to his patients of all ages. Dr. Hammer grew up knowing that he wanted to be in this profession. He remembers jokingly saying when he was a child that his family was always going to see a chiropractor. So he himself decided to, on the role of becoming a chiropractor and that's part of what he does today. And he's offering more of a wellness approach when it comes to his patients. Dr. Hammer practices what he preaches when it comes to health and wellness. He's into bodybuilding, and he even won the Mr. Atlanta bodybuilding competition. I am always interested in training patients and body shaping and helping them in taking better care of themselves, he said. Please welcome to Real Talk, Dr. Jay Hammer. How are you, you today, Dr. Hammer? Great, thank you for having me here today. Awesome. Dr. Hammer, when you think about obesity, what is the first thing that comes into your mind? When I talk to people about obesity, and again, I've been doing this for 33 years, my main concern is not to just talk about it, but let the people themselves see what they've done to themselves. For example, there was a young lady here while I was sitting and waiting to come on. She was probably five foot three, five foot two. And I asked her how much she weighed, and then I asked her how much you think you should weigh. She really didn't know exactly, but basically we know at five foot two you're supposed to be approximately 110 pounds. She's probably around 170 pounds. So instead of saying, gee, you're fat, gee, let's go ahead and put you on a, I don't like to use the word diet, but let's go ahead and get you to lose weight, I start explaining physiology to the body. What I mean by is this. I'm in my 60s now and I look at I look at many people now my age who are on high blood pressure medication, cholesterol medication. Sex is out of the question because they can't, they've lost any urge for that. Their urge to get up and fight and live their lives, they're still a young person, is gone. And I explain to them things like I did to this young lady, that with every pound of weight we gain, over the allotted amount of what we were designed to be, the body has to grow three miles of blood vessels to supply that pound of weight. Everybody knows approximately what a pound of meat looks like. 
So if this lady, this the young lady that I was talking to, is 50 pounds overweight, her body has actually had to grow 150 miles of blood vessels and lymphatic vessels to supply that tissue. If you didn't grow those blood vessels, then we would go through necrosis, the body would die. Now, I had her make a fist, and basically if you make your fist, that's the size of your heart. Now we know that with me, I'm five foot nine, See, 172 pounds. You know, I got, I'm in pretty good shape. But yeah. I know what I'm supposed to do, not what I want to do. The point is, is if I look at myself and I say, well, at 170 pounds, I know, I mean, at 174 pounds, I'm five foot nine. I know then approximately with every pound of weight over that, my heart has to work a lot harder to supply that pound of weight. Now, I'll see people your age, young people your age on blood pressure medication. If I see eight people, uh, 10 people in my office on blood pressure medication, eight of them are overweight. But now, who, who is basically at risk? Who are the type of people that need to be really watching? Saying, Nobody's at risk. risk. Okay, that's a great, what you said is a great question. I want people to understand that it's not God that decided, oh, I'm gonna give you blood pressure problems at 27, or it's not God deciding that, gee, I'm, I'm not doing anything today. I'm going to give John high blood pressure at 50. I'm seeing people now with, with diabetes at 35. Just, they woke up one day and the blood sugar was off. Yet, what happened to the first 35 years? Exactly. The position here is to say, I caused it. I caused it and I will stop it. Now, when you look here at the heart, to go back to that point, because I don't want to belabor it. But the point is, is if my heart is designed to handle so many miles of blood vessels, now it's common sense, then if I gain the weight and my body has to, let's say, grow another 150 miles of blood vessels, how is the heart going to get the blood 150 miles more than it's supposed to? The only way, raise the blood pressure. So all of a sudden your blood pressure jacks up. So instead of saying, well, Here's what we got to do. We got to bring it so the heart stops working so hard that it's got to raise its pressure. Nah, don't bother. Give him a pill. Give him a blood pressure pill. Problem is, you're not fixing the cause of the problem. The cause of the problem could be just the, the, the weight. Mm -hmm. And we talk about weight, mm -hmm. and what you brought in, me in here today to talk about is weight gain, weight loss, is to understand that losing weight is not a curse. Losing weight is not a trap. Losing weight is a way of life. Like, I do it every day. You do it every day. Obviously, you look fabulous. You do what you're supposed to do, not what you want to do. Right. So when you ask me who is more susceptible to high blood pressure, I'm not going to say, well, and it's is true. It, we is know it, physiologically. Is it black people? Because, I mean, it right. seems to be something that uh, medically over the years is something it that African Americans be, suffer okay, with. That's... And I'm not going to curse, but that is not fair and that's not true. Yeah. Because then what you're telling me then is the black person, the African American, is weaker than the white American. You're telling me that blacks are weaker than whites, therefore they have to be on blood pressure medication more than whites? No. But maybe now if you say to me that could it be the quality of food or how we eat yeah, and the way we take care of ourselves, yes. But that comes about by years and years and years, the history of the black man. And I, I brought this up once, I don't want to go too far with it, but basically, wh when we look at, for example, fried foods, who's known to love and consume more fried foods? African the black, black population. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, why We fried love foods? fried chicken, don't we? <laughs> but then you, let's go back yeah. of But why. there's a consequence. And why? We have to look back at the history and say, well, why, why is it that fried food and the black population are synonymous? I bet you don't know. I want to throw out, this brings me, I want to throw out some statistics of, and, 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 and this is not necessarily to any particular race, but over, these are some shocking facts that we could basically bring back under control through good dieting and exercising. Over 58 million Americans are overweight, and over 40 million Americans are obese. Over 3 million Americans are morbidly obese, but less than 80% of the American population exercise, let alone eating properly. This is because people, and we have all been guilty, we've all been brought up with the idea that 
take a pill. The answer's in a pill. And the truth is, be it with anything, either raising our families or taking care of our homes, we are responsible. In the end, we are responsible for taking care of ourselves. Now, would I not like to sit down and have uh, a bleached flour Danish with sugar and cream in it?